Now we're going to put together everything you've learned, end behavior, um, how many turns, um, what your x-intercepts are, so that we can sketch a rough graph, not, a, not an exact graph, just a rough graph of a polynomial function. Okay, first of all, we need to have a little talk about symmetry, because we kind of skipped over this before. If something is symmetric about the y-axis, then that means that the y-axis acts like a mirror. And here you can see if I choose a value of x and I can find the corresponding value of f of x, if I take the negative of that x value and, and it equals the same y value, then I have symmetry about the y-axis. And we say this, f of negative x equals f of x. I'll give it an example here in just a second. We also have, um, for another kind of function, if it is symmetric about the origin, which means it actually reflects over the line y equals x. The way you test for that is you plug in negative x for wherever you have an x, and if it reverses all of your signs so that you have negative f of x, then it is um, symmetric about the origin. So let's do an example. It really is pretty simple. If f of x is x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 6, I am going to test it out by everywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute a negative x. And I guess I better make this guy negative here. All right? When I raise a negative value to an even exponent, it makes it a positive. So I have, this is going to be x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 6. So it didn't change any of my signs. So I'm exactly the way I started. So f of, that, f of negative x equals f of x. So that is symmetric about the y-axis. Yes. And on this one, if I have x cubed minus 2x, when I substitute negative x, when I raise a negative value to an odd power, it becomes negative. So this is going to be negative x cubed plus 2x, which is everything is the exact opposite. All of my signs change to the exact opposite. So that means that it is uh, symmetric about the origin. Yes, once again. Okay, here are the steps that we're going to use to kind of sketch out this, these graphs. We're going to first of all look at the leading coefficient to check out the end behavior. Then we're going to factor and find the x-intercepts. And then we're going to check the exponents of each factor to see if the graph crosses or bounces. If it's an even exponent, it bounces. If it's an odd exponent, it will cross the graph. And then we want to find the y-intercept, which means substitute 0 for x. And then we want to check for symmetry, which we just did, see if what, what happens when you substitute a negative x for each one of your x's. And then find the maximum number of turning points. All right, let's go through an example here. We're going to do f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. Okay? The first thing, my leading coefficient suggests that it's going to be up and up, both of them, because it's even function with a positive um, uh, leading coefficient. Okay, so the second thing we're going to do here is we, we're going to do a little substitution in order to be able to um, factor this. So we're going to let u equals x squared, and if we do that, then we have u squared minus 2u plus 1, which factors to u minus 1 times u minus 1. But it's not u we're looking for, it's x. So we're going to substitute our x um, squared back for u, and we have x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1. You spread this out, x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1. So our values are x is going to be negative 1 and positive 1. Now if we kind of restack these, so we put the negatives and positives together, I'll have x plus 1 squared as a factor, and x minus 1 squared as a factor. They both have an exponent of 2, which means at negative 1 and at positive 1, we're going to catch a bounce. Okay? So now plug in a 0 for x, and we get the y-intercept is 1. And if we take a look at some symmetry here, if we substitute negative x for the, our x's, you notice that since both those negative x's are raised to even powers, it doesn't change anything. So we come back to the same original equation. So yes, it does have symmetry about the y-axis. So let's take all this knowledge, and let's see if we can... Um, oh, wait a second. Uh, we have three turning points. I have to remember that, too. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to do it up and up. 
Next thing we know is we have um, x-intercepts at 1 and negative 1, so there they are. We also have a uh, y-intercept of 1. I went ahead and started drawing that. And we know since it starts up and it's going to bounce off of that first one, bounce up to, it has to go through the um, y equals uh, 1, and then it will come back down and bounce again. And you notice that it is symmetric about the y-axis. So that's just that little quick sketch. Now you can actually plug in a few extra x values to see just how wide the graph goes out, but I'm not really interested in that so much as you being able to tell me what the trend is. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this one. Um, this is x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. So we know that it goes from down to up uh, because it's an odd power and it's positive. Okay, so now we have, we're going to um, group this and take out an x squared. So we have x squared times x plus 2 minus 1 times x plus 2. So we have x squared minus 1 times x plus 2, or x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 2. So there are our roots, negative 1, 1, and negative 2. And each one of those factors has an exponent of 1, so it's going to go through the graph at negative 1, 1, and negative 2. Okay, so let's put here what we, what we know so far. Okay, there are our uh, x-intercepts, or our roots, and we know that the y-intercept is negative 2, so let's put that there. And we know that f of x equals Negative, okay, when, when we put negative in here, it's going to change our x cubed to negative x cubed. It's going to keep the 2x squared the same. It's going to change the negative x to a positive x, and of course we have negative 2. So it doesn't match up. They didn't, the signs didn't all stay the same or all change to the exact opposite. So there's neither uh, symmetry, y-axis or origin. All right, so we know that we're going to, Oh, and it turns two times. Sorry about that. Okay, so we know we're going to start down here. And we have to go up through uh, negative 2 and then turn around and come back through negative 1. And we have, there's our one turn. We only have one more turn, so we have to go all the way down to the y-intercept and then up through the next root. So basically that's what our graph looks like. Okay, so go ahead and do checkpoint number 9. And I'll see you in class. Bye.